across the vast multiverse. The brutal Combine Empire spread chaos and torment wherever they went. This horror manifested in the mutilation and forced servitude of every creature they encountered, with each conquered world adding to the Empire's might. With the fall of each world, the Combine's power grew, fortified by the acquisition of new technologies, biological assets, and conscripted soldiers. Among their most intriguing creations were technologies and life forms adapted and reshaped into weapons and machinery, serving as relentless cogs in their unstoppable war machine. Upon their arrival on Earth, they also created something that became one of the most important aerial units in their army. What was this unit? What of hours did they adapt to create it? And just how dangerous was it? In this video, we explore the lore and story behind the Hunter Chopper. The Seven Hour War stands out as one of the darkest moments in human history. As Earth's militaries united to counter the sudden invasion, the Combine not only deployed their armies with brutal efficiency, leveling cities and decimating the population, but they also observed humanity's combat strategies and the tools we used in defense. Throughout their multiversal conquests, this alien empire enforced forced evolution on countless biological species, adapting their physiology to serve the Combine's needs. Just a few of these became the Gunship, the Dropship, Hunter and Strider. Once creatures on their own worlds captured and turned into living weapons, on Earth, the human captives also became prey to this relentless and horrendous process in which they were transformed into subservient tools and weapons in the Combine's war machine. The Stalker was one of the worst cases we know of, a complete biological transformation into a mindless tool. Alongside these genetic alterations, our benefactors also reverse engineered our technology into something useful for their occupation of our world and the others they had conquered. Razor trains were developed from our train systems. These were used to transport units and assets across the planet. The armored personnel carriers came from our military ground units. And there was one more that was not only fascinating, but also deadly to any resistance member who encountered them. An airborne unit that was the perfect addition to the Combine's arsenal. The perfect support unit. It remains unclear which specific human helicopter the Combine adapted to develop the Hunter Chopper, but it is speculated that this creation came from a hybrid design drawn from two iconic models, the Soviet Mil Mi-24 Hind and the American Boeing AH-64 Apache. The Mil Mi-24 was developed by the Mil Moscow helicopter plant under aerospace engineer Mikhail Mil. It entered service in 1972 and quickly became one of the Cold War's most recognizable helicopters. Known for transporting up to eight troops, the Mi-24's robust design earned it the reputation of a flying tank capable of delivering both troops and firepower. The Hunter Chopper's design likely drew inspiration from the Mi-24's durability and versatility. Its four-bladed rotor and pivoting tail rotor granted remarkable maneuverability, and its heavy armor provided formidable resistance against ground attacks, qualities that made it a resilient target even against advanced weaponry. This sturdy, dual-purpose gunship allowed onboard units to engage targets mid-flight with its distinctive tandem cockpit and armoured frame. The Combine's modifications, incorporating features from the Boeing AH-64's Apache, further enhanced these traits. Developed in the 1970s by Hughes Helicopters, the Apache was later manufactured by Boeing Defense, Space and Security after Boeing acquired Hughes in 1984. This development began in response to the US Army's demand for an advanced attack helicopter capable of close air support and anti-armor missions. 
The Combine's Hunter Chopper appeared to have taken cues from the Apache's compact weapon integrated frame, adapting its nose mounted cannon, which on the Hunter Chopper became a Combine Pulse Cannon. This deadly addition enabled precise strafing runs against resistance forces, allowing operators to eliminate targets with lethal accuracy. Resistance forces quickly recognized the threat posed by this flying juggernaut and avoided it at all costs. As an air unit amongst the Combine ranks, the Hunter Chopper stood out for its multi-role versatility and sheer persistence. Alongside ground units like the Striders and Overwatch Soldier, the Hunter Chopper remained a feared presence, bolstered by the pulse weaponry and tactical systems the Combine had reverse engineered from Earth. By merging features from both the Mill Mi-24 and Boeing AH-64, the Combine engineered a relentless support asset, a dangerous aerial vehicle both agile and tenacious in pursuit of its targets. In combat, the Hunter Chopper remained a near impenetrable threat, striking fear into resistance forces with its swift, unyielding attacks. The Pulse Cannon, however, was not its only form of attack. This fusion of Soviet and American technology had created a formidable machine. The Combine's take on an attack helicopter became instrumental in controlling the frightened human population. Yet, a resistance force occasionally challenged the Combine's plans. The cockpit housed space for two Overwatch soldiers, one as the pilot and the other as the pulse gun operator. Both were protected by bulletproof glass, thwarting attempts by snipers to eliminate them. The sound of a hunter chopper became a familiar and ominous presence, at least for those that worked against the Combine, but not all of them were used to keep control. Some units were repurposed for non-combat tasks, such as transporting construction materials to the upper levels of the Citadel during its construction, but the majority were dedicated to combat scenarios. The wasteland region outside of a Combine-controlled City 17 presented dangerous landscapes infested with Xenian flora and fauna. These were areas that even the Combine avoided unless necessary. However, from the skies, the Hunter Chopper excelled, performing recon missions to locate human and Vortigaunt escapees, when capture was not an objective. Its pulse cannons swiftly eliminated targets. The Combine's modifications on this hybrid design included two wings mounted on either side of the chopper, each outfitted with missile launchers for guided rocket attacks alongside constant streams from its pulse cannons. This configuration proved highly effective during the raid on Black Mesa East, where rockets were launched directly into the base and dealt significant damage as the ground units entered the territory. One of its most notable capabilities was bomb deployment. These bombs, ideal for drive-by attacks, destroyed heavily armoured vehicles or stationary weapons when its turret or rocket fire could not suffice. In the canals, the bombs floated to the surface and became extremely dangerous to any who got close to them, specifically refugees who attempted to sneak out of their designated habitat. During conflict, resistance members observed that these bombs were often deployed as a last resort when the chopper was under heavy fire and unable to escape. Interestingly enough, the chopper also appeared to be capable of deploying an unusual number of these bombs. On one occasion, a chopper dropped approximately 30, despite its size suggesting that it did not have enough space to store them all. Resistance theorists proposed two explanations for this phenomenon. The first theory suggests that the Combine used a form of localized teleportation to load the bombs into the chopper as needed. However, the Combine's own efforts to acquire localized teleportation technology means that they could not use something they did not have. The second and most likely theory is that these bombs were stored in a compact state and expanded to full size only upon deployment. As the years passed of Combine occupation, 
the resistance grew in numbers and became braver and more strategic in their efforts to dismantle the Combine's control of the planet. Yet, in Eastern Europe, specifically around the Sector 17 region, hunter choppers were predominantly deployed alongside armoured personnel carriers to track down refugees and anti-citizens on the ground, to dismantle the power the resistance had attained. From above, these units provided essential air support, patrolled, surveyed from the sky, relayed critical information to local units, and, when required, engaged in combat, frequently sighted around the canals and even as far out as the outlands, these aerial units proved instrumental in combine raids and assaults. They were stationed in key combine control regions, where they dropped bombs on resistance built outposts to obliterate them. Equipped with pulse cannons and rockets, hunter choppers proved lethal to any who attempted to escape. The unit's bulky, reinforced structure made it nearly invulnerable to ground fire unless the attack came from high-powered weaponry. For resistance members, the best defence upon detection by a hunter chopper was to often flee or hide. On rare occasions, however, the resistance managed to down one of these units, salvaged its pulse cannon from the wreckage, and repurposed it as a weapon for a resistance airboat, which allowed refugees and resistance members to navigate the canals towards Black Mesa East with something to fight back with. Following the fall of City 17, as both the Resistance and Combine moved further into the Outlands, human and Vortigaunt forces used every piece of technology available to them to counter the relentless aerial units. Gordon Freeman was noted to have even used his gravity gun to launch back bombs dropped by a hunter chopper, successfully damaging the craft. In a desperate attempt to destroy everything around it, the chopper's operator ascended to a higher altitude and released all remaining bombs in a single devastating barrage. A final attempt by the pilot to take out everything around them before death. As with all Combine units, the Hunter Chopper was likely not limited to Earth alone and may have been deployed on other worlds during different invasions. For the Combine Overwatch soldiers already stationed aboard these units, this relentless cycle of warfare became their reality. As of now, the war simply goes on, and the Hunter Chopper will continue to be an essential unit in the Combine's army. The Hunter Chopper is often overlooked. While it was not one of their monstrous creations that came from the torment and mutilation of a sentient biological creature, it was one of the most powerful, resourceful and efficient. These were incredibly difficult units to evade and were one of the few human-based combine operator vehicles that decimated resistance members and bases. After the fall of City 17, the Combine were cut off from Earth and the forces on the planet were left to recover and scramble to regroup. For the resistance stragglers that did not make it to White Forest, or those further afield, this would have been the perfect opportunity for the Hunter Chopper operators to take out even a small amount of the resistance's forces. With limited numbers and the deactivation of the citadels across the world, the Combine forces were finite. However, on other worlds across dimensions, these hunter choppers would have still been in use and utilised to aid in the invasion and fall of civilizations. I have been asked to do this video a lot and I was not too sure about it. I held off for a while but the fact I was able to research real world events made this one of the most interesting videos I think I have put together in a while. While I began this channel to simply explore topics and theories within video games, I do love it when I'm able to explore real world history even if it is not something I thought I would have been interested in initially. I am currently researching the Philadelphia experiment because I think that would make a good video. With the end of the year coming up, 
I have begun to think about what timeline to do next. The Half-Life and Portal timeline did pretty well, so did the Doom one. I'm just not sure which one to do next, maybe Team Fortress or the Half-Life 2 beta. I have also begun to think about content for next year. I know I will run out of Half-Life to cover at one point, but not yet. So I have added Stalker and Left 4 Dead to the list of games to deep dive into. That was everything I wanted to say. If you enjoyed this video, then I'd love you to subscribe to the channel, like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you did not, and let me know what you thought in the comments below. Finally, I would like to thank my goals here patrons and channel members. Jonas, Lewis, Queen Arby, Fluffy the Dragon, Ruben Mendoza, Oren X, Azu, Comfy, Yali Rodriguez, 501st Clumboy, Drakey Phoenix, Average Sol, Jasper Timry, Imperial Embers, Jimsy, Canifex, and Daniel Carl Drawings. What did you think of the Hunter Chopper? Did you enjoy Root Canal? And what would you like me to cover next? Let me know in the comments below. This is where our story ends. Check back soon for a new one.